Hey guys, it's me, Bren, and I'm out in the dome today, and I want to show you what's going on this year in here. I've got a lot of really neat things blooming and just doing great with little effort, really, uh, because I've been tending to outside. We've had some super unseasonable warm weather. Well, it's kind of been a roller coaster, which is normal for Ohio, but all all of it added up, it looks like it is going to be an amazing growing season now and ahead of us. So I want to show you what is going on here in my dome. So here we go. To be honest with you, I am a little embarrassed. I didn't think of doing this early on uh, years past with my sensitive plants that really like the humidity and like to stay warm. Because what I've been doing is keeping a little moisture in here and the heat is amazing. In fact, I can feel the warmth coming out right now. And what I got going on in here are my peppers, which are doing great. I started these from seed. I have a new one this year. This one's the Jay's Peach, which is a really hot, hot, kind of ghost looking pepper. Um, also, oh, I was experimenting right here with these tomatoes. I had started these in my hydroponics. So they are loving the moisture in here. And the humidity is much better than what I have in the house, actually. But they are doing amazing. I've been using a few of my friend's red solo, solo cups. She gave me some plants last autumn. And now I'm just kind of recycling them. And I have my tomato plants being babied in here until it's time for them to go outside, which is, uh, let's see, today's April 17th, I think. So we got almost a whole month before my plants can go out in the garden outside just to be safe and that's okay because these need a little more time in here just to get a little bigger but the root systems on these looked amazing when i transplanted them and just some of my favorite accent plants are enjoying the extra little coziness here just like that hi fish and this year i have a new cactus that is starting to bloom. Look at that. How pretty is that? I think that thing's going to be in full bloom maybe by tomorrow because we're supposed to have uh, more sun to do with cloudy and rainy all day outside. So there it is. These came in a big container pot which had about six or seven other cactus last year and I kind of let them sit for a bit and until finally this year I finally got around to potting them into their own containers so they had their own room and trust me these will grow really big if I don't overwater them which I've been pretty good about that there's one back there that I brought in here that one was oh my goodness a fourth a fourth of the size it is now in over a, just a little over a year on that one so just some fun things you can do in this structure. They love it when the summer comes on and that heat is in here. I've got just the right plants that just take in the sun and I've got more I'm working on, so stay tuned. My cannas are doing good. I see a little bit of green coming up on one of those. Actually, the one in the back looks like there's a little coming up. But what I'm over here for is the lantern I wintered over. I've been cutting the blooms off just to force more growth of green and hopefully roots get stronger. But look at this. This cactus is getting ready to bloom again. So exciting. So stay tuned. And one of my stock plants is doing really well. Look how pretty this one is. Isn't this one pretty? I found this one last spring and it's just been, I cut it back when it gets too hot and then it pops back up and it blooms again. It's just so pretty in the dome. In this bed of succulent, I have craziness going on. There's a fig coming up and I have my smaller elephant ear that come up in here. These containers, these two get actually moved out to my deck by the pond when it's time for it. Still got a couple more weeks. <laughs> Something's been munch crunching on my cabbage plant I've got over here. But look at this, it's starting to make a little cabbage. I just love this. Every time I see a cabbage 
starting out like this, I can't help but remember when I was a little girl, uh, the Cabbage Patch dolls were new, and I actually lived in Georgia during that time when they were popular. That's where they came from. Um, and I just thought they were so neat. I never actually had a real Cabbage Patch doll when I was little. Um, maybe I was just getting a little too old for it and they were kind of expensive, but every time I see a cabbage plant, I just think of the little cabbage and I wonder, is the little baby going to pop out of there? <laughs> no, of course not, but it's just cute. <laughs> this will probably end up staying in here. Uh, I hate to put this outside and have it get hit uh, with a frost, but I, I think we're pretty clear. Uh, I probably will end up waiting till another week or so, another week, because um, this weekend I see some low 34 is in the overnight, and unless I cover it, putting it outside, um, it might be chancing it. So, so far it's doing good here in the dome in this cooler location, so I'm just going to leave it be and see what happens. We might actually get a yummy cabbage just in time for Memorial Day maybe, huh? My Swiss chard I brought in from last year out in the race bed. I've been enjoying that all winter long. It still looks amazing. My pathway looks really tight here. <laughs> and what else? Oh, my celery. I have celery, old celery that's in here that I was eating off of for the winter, but I kind of left it because I got busy with other stuff, but it's looking good. It still has some nice, nice cuts on it or stalks and Oh my, look at that, my light green uh, Swiss chard is actually looking like it's might pushing to seed maybe or bolting. So I might have to move that one out. Maybe, I don't want to lose it. A good thing you can do with these, what I've done in the past is, especially with the rainbow Swiss chard, is I just get in there and prune it back. If you don't want to eat it, you may have friends who have chickens or livestock. They will love this. Um, sometimes I throw some of these out into the wood line for rabbits, the bunnies that ro hop around in the woods. Um, but what you can do is just chop this back, just harvest it like you would and leave the little tiny new growth. And then I can just replant this outside after all dangers of hard frost. Our frost is gone, which we're pretty close, but it's doing good here now, so we're gonna leave it be. And oh, where's this guy coming from? Oh my goodness. Oh, it's a geranium from last year. I just love geraniums now that I have a dome. I didn't really used to like them. They used to be like an old, old plant, kind of boring, but now I love them because I enjoy geraniums in here basically year round in the dome because they just love the conditions in here. Isn't it funny the geraniums bloom and hang out with my managavi? <laughs> Fun. All right, so right here, my, you'll never guess with this one. This is an olive, olive tree, and it is blooming. Last year, I had a few little tiny olives on it. Um, I just let them go. I didn't try eating them or anything. I guess you're supposed to Oh, I see one forming on there, actually. Real close. This one right on there. A couple of them. That's kind of neat. I just love the tree. It's real pretty. Back behind it is my uh, goji berry vine. I think it's huge. And that is right next to my pomegranate. It's a pomegranate monster. This thing is huge this year. Look at it. It likes it over here facing the south. Such a happy plant. I don't see any blooms on it this year, but maybe I'm a little early for that. We'll see. It's so pretty though. I guess I could move the container out outside, but it does just fine in the dome. So who knows? We might just leave it here. I've got a tiny pomegranate, like for miniature gardening, pomegranate tree. This one's kind of struggling. It got hit over the winter. I'm not sure what happened to that, but it's got some new growth coming off on it. And look, it's even got um, the neat little blooms coming on. It's a cute little plant and my little man and guy, loves hanging out with it. So we'll keep it there for now. Oh, 
Oh, it's getting a little steamy. It's a little steamy. It's humid in here, but there it is again, the silver swirl. Doesn't that look pretty in a hanging basket? It's kind of neat. This one, actually, I need to add a little water to. It's getting full sun in here in the dome and it's doing great. So pretty. It just adds some nice uh, very variation with all the green that's going on. Oh, look. Can you name that plant? <laughs> I've never had armorillus plants blooming with tomato starters. That's something new in here. I started a bunch of uh, armorillus bulbs uh, about, it was toward the end of February and here we are mid-April. And I've just been having so much fun taking photos of these pretty blooms. I know they're more of a an autumn or Christmas kind of plant in uh, my area anyways, but they're just so pretty. Let me show you what a couple of those look like. All right, so here's a couple of them here. Isn't this one pretty? Oh my goodness, look at the little center, so pretty. And this one's real similar. Now the colors might be off just a little. I did notice with some plants in the dome, uh, the, the um, UV diffusion or how this plastic I have on here diffuses the sun coming through the ultraviolet lights um, does change some of my plant blooms sometimes but this one is just so pretty isn't that a pretty one and this one they call zombie <laughs> I get it because it's so it's like weepy a weepy little pretty bloom I love that one that's pretty actually I'm going to take that one in the house to enjoy as a table arrangement because I've got them all potted separately. Cute, cute. Oh, this one's about done. I got a couple done. So what I'm gonna do once this is pretty much done, that's just so pretty. Um, what was that one? TNT, I think is called, yeah. And um, what you can do is cut off the stalk, the tube where the bloom when the bloom is done and that will actually help force uh, green leaves to come out and grow. I'm going to actually take my armorless collection that are already done blooming this year and I'm going to put them out in the landscape in mostly morning to early afternoon sun just so the green can get big and the bulb hopefully root system will get stronger and then come Probably the end of July, early August, I'm going to bring those in and set them in a shade area to force them to kind of take a little nap so we can get ready to enjoy blooms again next year. So hopefully that works. Keep your fingers crossed and follow me so you can find out. But here are some of my tomatoes. These I have not separated yet. I'm trying a bunch of new ones this year. Um, Aeneas, Aeneas Noir, Noir. Um, a couple different ones. I've got medium, medium rare tomato. I think I found that seed locally, maybe in the burpee display or something. Brown sugar tomato. Oh, a couple of my favorite, uh, tidy rose and, uh, oh, home slice. Home slice is kind of small still. I need to give him a little love and get him, get him going. Uh, once again, my peppers are doing really good again this year. These are just my little um, most, oh, those are tomatoes, but most of mine, except like this red imperial, I think these are called. It's a new, just red sweet pepper. Um, but, uh, most of these hotties I will probably put in containers and keep them in here in the dome where it's hotter. And then when the summer heat really kicks in here in Ohio, move them outside for a bit and then probably bring them back in for the harvest. We'll see. Um, I love this one. This one is Puma. These peppers are so yummy and that seed is so easy to grow. I've got quite a few plants in that that I started from seed. So that's fun. I know it looks kind of messy, but in a few weeks as this sun kicks in, the heat kicks in, these things will really take off, which I'm kind of happy they're small right now because it's way too early to do that. So here's a couple of my tomato plants that I brought out from the hydroponics. I just, uh, I really have a hard time growing those tomato plant or tomato plants period in the hydroponics. I don't like them in the hydroponics. They just do not do well. They do much better out here in the dome, especially uh, late winter, early spring. And then of course the end of summer or of course outdoors during the summer. Um, that's just me. 
but these are a couple of the plants um, that I brought out and oh look at this I even have a couple ready to go a couple to be harvested here these are just the little tiny little tiny arrow garden red ones I gotta take those in and yeah they're mixed in up here my paperweights are done blooming here but look at this pretty rose this is a little rose miniature rose uh, my niece gave me a couple of years ago I'm still enjoying it in the dome so that's a lot of fun I think I'm gonna end the video on my favorite <laughs> I say that about all my plants don't I this is the beautiful at last rose which I have growing in a container and I just can't talk about this one enough. It's just such a pretty plant. And I am standing, I am about maybe two and a half, three feet from this rose. And it just smells amazing. It's just a nice, sweet floral scent coming from this baby. So pretty. So pretty. And there you have it. All right, so there it is. Thanks for checking out my video today. I hope you will connect with me. You can find this and other creative living ideas on my website at brenhaas.com. I've got a lot going on this year. I can't wait to share with you more about what's new this year and how things out here turn out. So I hope you follow me. See you next time.